After many years and many delays, the time has finally come. The Alpha 2 start date has been revealed, and we now know that we can jump into the world of ERA for the first time since Alpha 1 on October 25th, 2024. But there is also a big catch that really no one saw coming. Alpha 2 at the start is not going to be persistent. We've been told for the last seven years that Alpha 2 would be a persistent alpha, but as all things with game development, stuff happens, and Alpha 2 will now go through multiple phases and expand the length of time servers are online over the next 10 months. But before we get into that, a lot of you have been wondering how exactly you can get into Alpha 2 now. Well, next Wednesday on August 21st, Alpha 2 key sales will return. There are three different keys you can buy, granting access to the different phases Intrepid has planned for Ashes of Creation, starting at $120. The first key you gain access starting on November 8th of 2024, about two weeks after the official start of Alpha 2. This gives Intrepid time to make sure everything is working properly before introducing that second wave of players into the mix. But from here on out, once you make that purchase of the first wave key, you continue to have access on the second and and third waves as well. And you can purchase this key right up until November 1st when that initial first wave begins. The second key is for $110 and gives you access to the second and third waves of Alpha 2 testing starting on December 20th. And the third key for $100 gives you access to just the third wave starting on May 1st. Keep in mind though that there is a limited amount of keys available and they could eventually sell out. So if you're really wanting to jump into the game, you should probably make your purchase sooner than later. These keys are not actual keys keys that you can buy for other people it'll link to your intrepid account too so those of you who were gonna buy some to give away or to hand out to other people this isn't the way to do it because it's just gonna be linked right to the account it's purchased on these keys also don't grant you access to the beta testing phase that's gonna come in the future they may bring beta keys online to sell eventually but as of right now this is not the case starting on october 25th is what is called phase one of the alpha 2 testing phase one as i said is no longer persistent and grants access to testing for from Friday to Sunday every weekend throughout the first phase. The goal of this test will be to test stability, scalability, performance, and progression. This will be done with a goal of around 3,000 concurrent users per server, concurrent meaning online at the same time, with EU servers and NA central servers being the ones available. Keep in mind though that these are their goals. Absolutely everything mentioned in this video could change as they respond to feedback or run into issues that cause delays. This has already been shown because as you may have noticed, well, there is no longer plans for the character creator to be available before Alpha 2 actually starts. Also, keep in mind that Alpha 2 is not meant to be a complete game or come anywhere near it. We are still a long ways out from getting to that point. There is a crap ton of content to be introduced in Phase 1 as well, as players dive into Vera for the first time. Not all of this content will be available at launch though. The goal of each phase is to have all of this content in by the end of that phase. For Phase 1 biomes, this includes 55 square kilometers of land, including the western and eastern riverlands, along with parts of the Sand Squall Desert and the Vandegar Tropics. Within this, there are 35 points of interest, a functioning day and night cycle, 4 seasons, dynamic world population, dynamic reward tables, 1 grand dungeon, which I assume is Carfin, and 4 pocket dungeons. Expect the tropics and the desert to be pretty barren content-wise, though, as it sounds like they're just going to be mostly PvP areas that Intrepid is referring to as lawless zones at the start. Areas where you are auto flagged for PvP and can take on the highest level of monsters to get crafting materials as needed. They will have things such as caravan destinations in there as well, but I imagine it'll be pretty empty beyond it at this phase. Node wise, there'll be 5 node locations that can progress to level 3, with some of the level 4 systems functioning. Dynamic road leveling between nodes will be functioning, 4 service building plots will be available, 5 default buildings, 8 active construction buildings, 5 passive, node currency, citizenship, 56 tax categories, 25 plus player commodities, 24 mayor or commission types, 35 node resources with tier 1 to 3 recipes, and service building expansion voting. For races, there are only 3 to be expected in this phase. The Vec Orcs, the Kalar Humans, and the Empyrean Elves. This decision is more so because each race needs to be fit with each piece of armor and to make sure everything is working on them correctly, which takes a ton of time, which is why we may have seen Dunir or Renkai in these streams, but they're not actually playable in the game yet because they're just not ready to be. For archetypes, you can select any of the six we have seen in showcases, such as the tank, fighter, mage, cleric, ranger, and bard. This includes 130 plus abilities across all six archetypes. Weapons include two-handed swords, one-handed 
maces, one-handed swords, scepters, wands, longbows, shortbows, spellbooks, shields, and focuses for offhands, along with 30 plus nodes per weapon tree. PvP includes flagging, lawless zones as I spoke of, the corruption system, guild wars, node wars as we saw in past streams, and caravan PvP systems. Four systems into your basics you can expect from any MMORPG. We got mounts, caravans, rafts, mail, trading, level 25 artisan professions, along with the tools and resources that come with those professions, chat features, item deconstruction and repairs, raid markers, and all of that stuff. And then the actual bulk of the content, there is going to be 460 obtainable pieces of gear, the Node War God Spike event, which is the Node War we saw in the showcase a few months back, there are 16 unique public events, 149 story-driven quests slash commissions, 111 treasure maps, 3 world bosses, we know 2 of them being Tumok and Firebrand, and 75 unique enemy creatures, which a lot of it is minor stuff you can expect in any MMO, and Intrepid just is covering their bases, giving players the expectation on what is there. Phase 2 though is where I feel like the real fun begins. Phase 2 kicks off December 20th of this year, 5 days before Christmas, and these servers will be on 5 plus days a week. Remember all this content will be in by the end of Phase 2 and subject to change, but in this we can expect the desert and tropics to be expanded, adding dynamic events, story arcs, and treasure maps to these biomes. There will be level 4 nodes, along with node sieges, vassal ship, node death, more mayoral commissions, relics, freeholds, more service buildings, and economic elections. This will also introduce the Veiloon humans and the Dunir dwarves, along with the rogue archetype. Originally, it was said the summoner and rogue would both be in the first major content update of Alpha 2, but that is clearly not the case anymore, as we can expect the summoner in Phase 3. There will also be 4 new weapons, being dual wield daggers, scepters, two-handed maces, and two-handed axes. For systems, siege vehicles and artisan ship skill trees will be the big ones in my opinion, but also come instance housing, player shops, leaderboards, repair kits, gems and sockets, siege vehicles, and more chat functions. And for the bulk of the actual content you can complete, more story arcs, dynamic world dungeons, and ambient NPC behaviors, on top of the additional content with the tropics and desert. Phase 3 is really where the persistent 24-7 testing begins, starting on May 1st with the introduction of two new biomes, being the Turquoise Sea, which I have absolutely no idea where that's at, and the Anvils, which is said to be mountain-like dwarven area, so somewhere in the north, I presume. We will also get four unique node layouts at this point, five node levels, military and divine election type, node happiness, policies, and additional commissions and service buildings. This phase is where the remaining four races will also be added, being the Pyre, Renkai, Nikua, and Tolnar, Orb, One-Handed Axes, and One-Handed Sword Pierce will be added for weapons, tons of guild content such as guilds being fully functional, guild freeholds, castle sieges, naval content, aquatic mounts, underwater combat, instance content, transmogs, pets, aerial combat, titles, religions, and the auction house, along with more treasure maps, events, and story arcs in the turquoise sea, and more dungeons. Obviously, these three phases are just the beginning, and as we progress further through it, you're going to find more content, and I imagine Intrepid will introduce more phases to us as well. Throughout these first three phases, we can expect any major hotfixes needed deployed as necessary, balance and major bug fixes will happen every three weeks, and major content updates will happen every six weeks, so things will be added at a fairly decent pace, leaving plenty for players to test. Overall, this was an insane livestream, and Intrepid gave us way more detail than I was expecting. I was more thinking we would get the initial October specifics, and then some vague plans of what they plan to add post-launch, but the amount of detail we got was pretty awesome. I am pretty disappointed though that Intrepid waited until this point to state that Alpha 2 would not be persistent. This is clearly something that they've known about for a bit and people have been talking for years that it would be persistent. So as soon as they decided against this, I feel like they should have shared this with the community so we could have put out those expectations for all the new people who've been coming in the past few weeks. But unfortunately it is what it is and it's just honestly it's poor communication on their part. For key sales, I think that they are priced pretty good. I get that people are going to have mixed feelings on this. The price is higher than a box cost of a normal video game. At the same time, nobody's forcing you to buy it. The keys are really for the people who want to help shape the future of the game, provide feedback, and support Intrepid in the process. If you don't like the idea of it or don't like the cost, well, you don't have to buy it. When Ashes of Creation launches, it will have no box cost and just the monthly sub, and you will be playing a complete game. You will not be getting that when you buy these keys, so 
So if it's not for you, do not make that purchase. They had to be fair with the pricing for those who spent hundreds of dollars in the past for alpha access, and unfortunately there was no way they were going to drop keys for 20 bucks. It's just a situation where not everybody's going to be happy no matter what they do, and I think they did the best decision they could make. This stream overall though has me extremely excited for the future of Ashes of Creation, and we only have a little more than a month until that NDA drops and we can finally dive into all the details that Ashes of Creation has to offer.